I want to send a million dollars for me to you without a bank. Satoshi solved that. But inadvertently, when Satoshi solved that problem, Satoshi figured out not just how to send a million dollars from New York to Tokyo without an inter intermediary, but how to send a million dollars forward in time 30 years without an intermediary. If you can transfer something without an intermediary, then you can store something without an intermediary. So the killer app of Bitcoin is the store of value in cyberspace. Michael Saylor explained why he thinks Bitcoin could change the financial world. During the conversation with Trish Reagan, he described Bitcoin as a safe, reliable way to store wealth. Saylor said Bitcoin's system allows people to send money directly without needing a bank. He believes Bitcoin's main use is to store wealth digitally, like a cyber savings account. While many investors still prefer traditional markets, Saylor thinks Bitcoin is becoming more attractive, especially when other options are limited. He suggested that people without access to U.S. investments might consider Bitcoin instead. Saylor highlighted that Bitcoin is recognized by the IRS, the SEC, and some public companies, which makes it even more trustworthy as an investment. Make sure to watch the video until the end. Now, let's get back to the video. First of all, what Satoshi discovered was how I send something of value between two, uh, two different individuals without a trusted intermediary. So that's known as solving the double spend problem. But if I want to send a million dollars for me to you without a bank, Satoshi solved that. But inadvertently, when Satoshi solved that problem, Satoshi figured out not just how to send a million dollars from New York to Tokyo without an inter intermediary, but how to send a million dollars forward in time 30 years without an intermediary. If you can uh, transfer something without an intermediary, then you can store something without an intermediary. So the killer app of Bitcoin is the store of value in cyberspace. And what's that worth? There's about $900 trillion worth of wealth in the world, and about half of it is used uh, for its utility value. People buy assets for their utility. They buy houses and buildings and and boats and planes and, and pieces of art because they want to use them, look at them. But the other half of that wealth is, is assets that are purchased as a long-term capital investment or as a store of value. So $450 trillion of the world is long-term capital. And so when I want to, if I take you and I drop you in Africa and I say, here, take $100 million, buy anything you want anywhere in Africa, but you got to keep it for 30 years. And, uh, you know, then I say, or you could have the same $100 million invested in the U.S. Most people would say, well, that's a no-brainer. I'm going to keep the money in the U.S. There's nothing I want in Africa that's as valuable as property in the U.S. Um, but what if you can't have property in the U.S.? Then what if your choice is I can have $100 million worth of Bitcoin in cyberspace, like I can have a hundred million worth of digital property, or I can have a hundred million worth of land in any country in Africa or any building or any company or any bond or any currency in Africa. And the answer when you think about it is there's nothing you want in Africa that that's better than having digital property in cyberspace. And there's certainly no place where you're going to trust your money or your assets for 30 years, much less a hundred years much less a thousand years. So when you start to ask the question, where do the 8 billion people on the planet and where do the 300 million corporations on the planet, where are they gonna store their capital if they don't have recourse to the United States and you know property on the Upper East Side, the conclusion you come to is I'm gonna put my money in cyberspace. And so Bitcoin's real use is it's digital property in cyberspace. It is cyber Manhattan. It is uh, a place where you can store your capital and give it to your great grandchildren. And you know that you're not going to be taking risk against uh, a bank as a counterparty or co another company or country or currency or culture. So after 16 years, it has been copied 10,000 times. They all failed. It's the winner, right? It's the network that all the smart, rich people in the world chose. It's the bank in cyberspace. If you show up in a city and there's 10,000 banks 
and you have a bunch of money. And the question is, which bank should you put your money in? Bitcoin's price experienced a notable increase of 3.2% between October 27th and 30th, briefly testing the $72,471 mark. This rise comes as geopolitical and economic uncertainties heighten investor interest in alternative assets. Bulls, or optimistic investors, believe that the current socio-political climate could foster a sustained long-term increase in Bitcoin's value, as events from energy price fluctuations to potential regulatory changes shape the market landscape. One significant factor contributing to market tension is the ongoing geopolitical conflict between Israel and Iran. Recently, oil prices fell by 5.5% following escalations, although energy output remained stable. This decline, however, drew the attention of traders and further underscored the risks posed by regional uncertainties, encouraging some investors to seek safety in more secure investments. Such instability, when combined with inflation concerns, has historically driven interest in Bitcoin and other non-traditional assets. Bitcoin's limited supply and predictable monetary policy offer a contrast to inflation-affected fiat currencies, adding appeal to those seeking long-term financial security. In addition to international developments, the upcoming U.S. presidential election has added another layer of uncertainty. Investors are wary, adopting more conservative positions and leaning towards cash and short-term government bonds to avoid potential risks associated with political outcomes. Historically, market predictions based on election surveys have been unreliable, which further intensifies market caution. However, some analysts argue that reduced uncertainty after the election, regardless of the victor, could benefit riskier assets like Bitcoin. If Kamala Harris wins, it could signal a move towards more defined crypto regulation, though its immediate impact on the market remains uncertain. Inflation continues to loom as a critical factor for investors. Initially, higher prices may drive business earnings, but prolonged inflation could reduce consumer spending affecting the broader economy. The next U.S. inflation report, scheduled for October 31st, will reveal September's core PCE index, with a predicted increase of 0.3%. Additionally, the Federal Open Market Committee's upcoming meeting on November 7th will be closely watched, as it could signal future interest rate policies. Recently, the Federal Reserve chose to pause further rate hikes, a decision that reflects caution. While this pause could suggest a more conservative approach, some investors worry that this stance might affect market sentiment if economic pressures persist. From a broader perspective, Bitcoin's ability to maintain a consistent monetary policy is increasingly seen as advantageous, especially when inflation rises. Traditional financial assets, whose value often fluctuates based on central bank policies, can appear less predictable than digital assets like Bitcoin, which some view as a hedge against inflation. As a result, Bitcoin's price trajectory might see more favorable outcomes in early 2025, especially if current economic and geopolitical conditions persist. Nonetheless, some traders may hold off on major investments in Bitcoin due to potential risks associated with the evolving market. Analyst and Bitcoin proponent Michael Saylor remains optimistic, suggesting Bitcoin will grow significantly in value over the long term. However, certain potential challenges to Bitcoin's stability and adoption might complicate this vision. Rising competition from other cryptocurrencies, regulatory risks, and broader adoption concerns could all influence Bitcoin's growth trajectory. Saylor's optimistic Bitcoin predictions, what potential challenges do you think might be overlooked, and how could these affect Bitcoin's long-term stability and adoption? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe for more update. See you in the next video.